Welcome to edupediaworld.com. In today's video, we will learn about animal husbandry. Let's move ahead. Let's now talk about some of the diseases. Cow and buffalo suffers from various diseases and these diseases adversely affect the production of milk and they can cause mortality of sick animals. Basically, they suffer from skin diseases, right? Let's talk more about the skin disease. This is a skin disease which is called as ringworm. Ringworm is one of the commonest skin disease that the kettles generally suffer from, right? And this disease is transmissible infectious skin disease which is generally caused by fungi, right? General symptoms of these disease are grey white areas of skin with an ash like surface so you can see it clearly as if it is burnt. Usually they will be circular in outline and slightly raised. So you can feel that they are slightly raised. They are coming out of the skin and can become very, very uh, extensive. In calves, most commonly uh, they are found around eyes, on ears, on back and in adult kettles they are also found in chest and legs more commonly. Right. So now what are the steps uh, to prevent these disease? Environment is the first thing that is we have to keep the environment clean and disinfected. Secondly, this must be done between each batch of animals. That is whenever every batch comes in, it has to be done. Every day the floor is to be clean. The environment is to be kept, you know, disinfected. Increase exposure to sunlight and being maintained on dry lots help prevent the spread of this disease between the animals. Generally because it is transferable, so the animals which are infected should be kept away from the other animals. Vaccination is also available in some of the countries which can be given to these kettles in order to uh, prevent them from getting affected from ringworm and reducing the density of animals in direct contact, right? So these are few steps that can be uh, taken in order to prevent this disease. So now that we have talked about uh, cattle farming, let's also discuss uh, poultry farming. Now poultry farming is very important because uh, it gives us a balanced diet. Poultry farming is generally involved in uh, production of egg and meat and other products which are obtained from these birds. The word poultry has originated from the old French word poult which means chicken or we can say a domestic fowl, right? So definitely in the past or in the history it must have been linked with domestication of chicken or domestication of uh, a fowl. But it is not that it, it only includes chicken. It includes other animals like the ducks, the geese, turkeys, guina, fowls, pigeon. So all these birds come under poultry. So in our country also chicken and egg because they become a very cheap source of animal protein. So India is the fifth largest country in the world in poultry production after China, USA and Japan. Right. Let's now discuss uh, improvement programs. The programs of crossbreeding between India and the foreign breeds for variety improvement are focused to develop new varieties of the following desirable traits. First is quantity and quality of chicks. Secondly, the draft broiler parent for commercial chick production for summer adaptation capacity tolerance to high temperature. Thirdly, low maintenance requirement. And lastly, reduction in the size of the layer with ability to utilize more and cheap diet formulated using agriculture products. So these are the improvement program that India has been involved. And this is basically done in order to improve the quality of the chicken and the egg Let's now talk about egg and broiler production. Let's first talk about the broiler chicken. What are broiler chicken? Broiler chickens or broiler are a domesticated fowl bred 
and raised specifically for meat production. So they are only for meat production. And what are the specifications? The specifications of broiler chicken are typical uh, broiler have white feathered and yellowish skin. Most commonly the broiler reach a uh, slaughter weight at between five to seven weeks of age. And third, lastly, slower growing breeds reach slaughter weight at approximately 14 weeks of age. So basically this is how the broiler chicken will look like. They are only for the purpose of meat, right? So now that we now know what is a broiler, let's also talk about uh, some poultry care, what care should be taken in order to keep them away from any kind of disease, to keep them safe, to increase the production of egg and the quality of egg and meat. So these are some important uh, things. First of all is maintenance of temperature and hygiene condition in the house. So wherever the, these birds have been kept, the temperature has to be normal temperature. It has to be maintained with what they are comfortable with, not too high, not too low temperature. Even the hygiene condition should be taken care of. Prevention and control of disease and pest is also one of the major steps that should be taken care of by the farmers. Two different kinds of um, birds that we talked about. One is the broiler and another one is the egg laying uh, hen, right? The chicken. So the broiler one, generally is fed with protein rich with adequate fat and levels of vitamin A and K are generally kept very high in the poultry. Whereas the egg laying chicken are given normal feed, right? So that is the difference between the feed, right? The, because the requirements of uh, each of these birds are different. Disease in the poultry, there are various diseases. The poultry birds get infected because of fungi, because of virus, bacteria, internal parasites, external parasites, protozoa. There are various diseases that they get infected from. Most of them are, you know, skin disease. You can see here these black protrusion that you see here. This is again some kind of skin disease that they suffer from. So these necessitate proper cleaning, sanitation and spraying of disinfectant at regular intervals, right? Proper vaccination can also help these poultry disease, these birds to be away from these diseases and can also prevent chickens from getting infected from the skin disease. So let's now talk about uh, some of the uh, general steps that can be taken in order to uh, ensure poultry care. First of all, do not mix different kinds of poultry birds or different age of birds in the same place. You're right? Why is it so? Because um, uh, some of the birds which are already infected may infect the other birds. Secondly, place the bird into clean and disinfected housing with adequate floor space. They should have adequate floor space to move around, right? Also provide adequate feeder and water space. Follow a proper vaccination program for layer and breeder birds and nutrition is the most important. They should be fed at the right time and feed the right type of mixed feed for the type and growth stage poultry. The feed has to be changed. The feed has to be different at every stage, right? Because the requirement for the bird, for the chicken is different at every stage. That's why the feed has to be changed, right? Some kind of, you know, sunlight is important for the egg type chicken. So these are few general instructions that should be taken care of. Now let's move on to fish production. We know that fish is an important aquatic food which is rich in proteins. A large section of Indian population also use fish food, particularly uh, the one which is uh, living in the coastal areas. They generally prefer, you know, fish food. Fish food is very nutritious. It is easily digestible. Fish can be used for uh, eradicating most of the problems of malnutrition because Fish oil is rich in vitamin A and vitamin D. There are two types of system by which we can capture the fishing. So first is the capture fishing and culture fishing. 
what is capture fishing wherein the fishes are not stored in any kind of container or any kind of pens they are free in a water resource and people move out to that water resource and then capture the fishes whereas culture fishery includes some kind of fish pens in which the fish are grown then the breeding takes place they are given food inside those fish pens only and they are cultured in that way so there are two kinds of fishing captured fishing and cultural fishing so now we know that there are two kinds of ways in which we can capture the fishes you know the fishes can be developed one is the capture fishing one is the cultural fishing and also it can be done in sea water as well as the fresh water that is the capture fishing is generally done you know in sea water wherein the fishes are openly available in the sea and on the other hand the cultural fishery is generally done in fresh water what is fish farming now fish farming includes some kind of tanks which are used to produce fishes and this is generally done for commercial purposes so this is called as fish farming so what is the difference between culture and capture fishery the capture fishery is a method of obtaining fish from natural resource that is the open sea whereas the culture fishery is a method of obtaining fish from fish farming which is also called as water agriculture secondly as far as the capture fishery is concerned there is no seeding and raising of fish the fish is it naturally grows in an open ocean right whereas in the case of culture fishery the fish is seeded and it is reared in the case of capture fishery it is undertaken in both inland and marine water whereas culture fishery is undertaken mostly in inland water and near sea shores where they can be captured and cultured so that is the difference between both india's marine fishery resource includes 7500 kilometers of coastline and deep sea beyond it particular marine fish varieties includes prawnflet mackerel tuna and bombay duck so these are the fishes that are generally available in the marine resource there are variety of methods by which they can capture different kinds of nets they use in order to capture the fishes yields are increased by locating large school of fish in the open sea using satellites and eco sounders and some marine fish of high economic value are also farmed in sea water right so this is about marine fishery about inland fishery fresh water resource includes canals ponds reservoirs and rivers and brackish water resources where sea water and fresh water mix together such as oysters and lagoons are also important fish reservoirs where the fishes can be cultured capture fishing is also done in such uh, inland water bodies but the yield is not very very high and most fish production from these resources is through aquaculture fish culture is sometimes done in combination with a rice crop so that the fish are grown in water in a paddy field more incentive fish farming can be done in composite fish culture system both local and imported fish species are used in such systems finally in such systems a combination of five or six fishes species is used in a single fish pond right these species are selected so that they do not compete for food habits as a result the food available in all the part of the pond is used and this increase the fish yield from the pond so this is what is the inland fishery now what are the problems in fishery now one problem with such composite culture is that many of these uh, fish breed only during some monsoon period right they do not breed in uh, the entire year but there are some specific monsoon period in which they breed even if the fish seed is collected uh, from the wild it can be mixed with that of the other species as well so a major problem in fish is lack of availability of such good seed to overcome this problem 
but ways have now been worked out to breed these fish in pond using what is known as hormonal stimulation let's now talk about beekeeping the practice of beekeeping is also known as apiculture and apiculture is done to get mainly the honey and the bees wax honey is known to have a lot of medicinal value it is found to be quite useful in the treatment of various disorders of humans for example the digestion the dysentery vomiting stomach ache and liver ailment honey is supposed to be blood purifier and cure against cough cold sore throat ulcers of the tongue ulcers of stomach intestine and lot many other diseases now because the honey is rich in iron and calcium it helps in growth of human body beekeeping being a low investment enterprise has become a favorite source of some extra income for the indian farmers they have started to do this beekeeping along with their usual agriculture practices beekeeping also helps in cross pollination of flowers and crops crop plant since the pollens are transferred from one flower to another flower by bees while they are connecting the nectar poisons of bee used in manufacturing of certain ayurveda and homeopathic medicines also quality and the value of the honey that is obtained from a bee hive it depends upon the pass rate or the flower which is available to the bee for nectar and pollen collection in addition uh, to the adequate quantity of pasturage the kind of flower that is available will also determine the taste of the honey so now let's talk about some of the diseases that generally the honey bees get infected honey bees are commonly infected by virus bacteria fungi and protozoa for example the bacterium bacillus infect blood of bee causing septic ema an interesting fact about beekeeping is the is their castes right any colony of bee generally consist of three castes one is a queen bee which is normally the only breeding female in the entire colony the queen is the only sexually matured female in the hive and all the other female worker bees and the male drones are her offspring and this queen may live up to 3 years or more and may be capable of laying half a million eggs or more in her lifetime at the peak of its breeding season a good queen may be capable of laying 3000 eggs in one day more than her own body weight also this is the queen bee right a second type of caste is a workers bee worker bee are generally the females they are typically 30000 to 50000 in number and the last categories are the drones these are males ranging from 1000 in a strong hive in spring to very few during drought and cold season right so these are three castes they will be found in any colony of bee hive and this is how they will look like this is how you can differentiate this is a drone or generally a male worker bee a female and this is a queen bee this is only breeding female in the entire colony So I hope you've understood about the different kinds of animal like the cattle, the poultry, birds, the bees and the fishes and how these animals are to be taken care, what kind of food is to be given to these animals at different stages because only if we take care of these animals we will be able to obtain very healthy products from them. We have to take every possible step in order to keep these animals healthy and safe and that's why these uh, small small precautions that we just discussed are very very important so thank you for watching edupedia world videos